Welcome to today's edition of Probably Not Doing a Product Justice. Today we're looking at my newest acquisition, an Atomos Ninja 5, a 5 inch 4K P60 capable professional monitor and recording device. It says so on the box. I'm going to introduce you to this device and go through a few games running at 4K ultra high definition at 60 frames a second. If you want to skip to one in particular, the time codes are in the description. I'm going to point out now that the footage you're going to see is not in HDR, it's not something I've been able to get working yet, but it looks bloody good anyway. We're going through Prey first, I just went back and loaded a saved game, this is actually close to the end. Now I'd never heard of Atomos before looking at these things, and I'm far from a professional, in fact there are probably some people who think it's a massive insult that I'm even using this device, but there is method to my madness. Um, Elgato recently released the 4K 60S Plus, which is also a 4K 60 game recording device, which is intended for gamers. And I've heard of a few issues of that device, even though I was very interested at first, not least the capacitive button. Uh, so I looked around and I bought this thing instead. There are a number of reasons why I think this is superior to the 4K 60S Plus. Primarily, it's because it uses SSDs rather than SD cards. Uh, I do actually have several V30 U3 128GB SD cards, which are supposedly suitable for 4K60 footage with the um, 4K60S Plus, but SSDs are much cheaper and they're much faster, and I'll get onto that in a bit. There are the Atom X SSDs available for this device, for the Atomos Ninja and all the others. Uh, I think they're actually made by Sony, but a Master Caddy is included with the device, which accepts any 2.5 inch SSD. Again, we'll come back to that in a bit. The thing has a screen, which is a huge bonus. The 4K60S Plus has video pass-through, so you could monitor it, but this having the screen on it for its primary purpose is huge, it's as a monitor, but also for, for my use it's fantastic. It works as a monitor for cameras and a recorder for those two, which is its primary use. It's designed to be plonked on top of a camera. I can use it for that as well. Uh, my GoPro has a tiny little screen, it's really hard to review footage, so I can put it, plug it into that and it's great, I can see the footage properly. And it's battery powered, it's portable, the whole point of the thing. So I'm running it off mains, but that is an advantage if you ever want to take it anywhere and you don't really want to plug it in. Price wise, the Elgato 4K 60S Plus is being shown on Amazon at the moment at $389.99. I got this Atomos device for 510 from WEX, so it's only £120 more and it has all of those extra features. Blackmagic Design have a similar device called the Video Assist 5 inch, 12 gig HDR at £750. That has 12 gig SDI input and it holds two batteries but it does use SD cards. There are many more devices by Blackmagic Design and Atomos that support SDI and XLR audio inputs. However, all of the current Atomos devices use SSDs, where the smaller Blackmagic Design devices use SD cards. They have rack-mounted SSD recorders if that's your thing, though. Now, I've actually stretched this footage out because my first part of speech went on a lot longer than I expected, um, and I wanted to comment over this stuff. I just found this guy hiding and uh, I feel a bit guilty to be honest. I took the long way around after the power plant um, and I got, <laughs> I got mugged by these mimics, loads of the things. I just panicked a bit and threw recycler charges. They seem to work. Yeah, I went the long way around instead of coming through the turbine room. Never tried that before. Another one down there. Yes. And then these guys with a null wave. Get the Margrave out. In the face. That was really nice. <laughs> I haven't played this game for a while. But look how nice the footage is. Next up, a bit of Spyro Reignited. And we're going to talk about SSDs. The SSD I'm using in this device to record this footage is a Samsung 860 Evo 500GB, the brand new drive and it works great at the resolutions and codecs I'm using. Again, we'll come to that stuff later. I tried this with a cheaper Kingston SSD, 240GB, and in my tests it just couldn't maintain the transfer speeds, and it's something I've seen with that drive as well. Going back to prices, the Samsung 860 EVO is currently 
showing at £74.20 on Amazon, where the bottom end V30 U3 SD cards at that size are £150 upwards. Video encoding wise, this device doesn't do H.264 or HEVC like the 4K60S Plus does. It uses professional codecs. Primarily ProRes. I'm using the LT version because anything more is massive overkill. All of the footage that I recorded for this video ranges between 680 and 780 megabits per second. Now, bear in mind a GoPro 7 4K footage is around 60 megabits per second. That's, that's a big difference. It also supports DNxHR, which in the LB form at least is half the bitrate, about 300 megabits per second, so you get twice the video on an SSD. I'm going to switch over to that in a second and see if you can notice the difference. It looks exactly the same to me, and I imagine with this being compressed for YouTube, it looks the same to you too. On this 500GB SSD, a ProRes LT, you get 1 hour and 17. Whereas this DNxHR, you get 2 hours 55. That's the estimated time shown on the device. The higher quality settings of the device go over a gigabit per second. Uh, almost 2 gigabits. So uh, I haven't really tried those ones too much. And about half an hour on this 500 gigabyte SSD. Next we're going for a bit of GTA 5. Uh, just messing around in the solo mode and I couldn't resist this biplane. Yeah, I like the new cars they're putting in with the gun runner. Yeah, this is solo mode. I'm using a train to spawn things in, but uh, it's good fun. Now, I fully admit that my GTA 5 isn't maxed out. The settings on this game can go wild, but um, it looks jolly nice, and this plays nice and smoothly. I ended up getting into a chase here when uh, somebody stole a wallet and it ended up being one of the gang vans, but about 10 seconds I managed to screw it up. Yeah, uh, I did eventually catch them though. Anyway, back to SSDs for a second. Atomos will sell you a USB docking station for your SSD. Uh, it's 60 pounds, which seems a little expensive to me. Uh, you can get cheaper versions. I'm using a cheaper version, which is still a decent quality device. It works great. You're gonna be maxing out the USB bus anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. I spawned in a tank here and decided to have a bit of a play. I managed to get one helicopter earlier on and uh, just went off on a bit of a rampage. This is kind of the only reason I fire up GTA 5 now. I'm not really a fan of the online mode, but there goes another helicopter and more police cars. Just to show you that with all the action and the explosions and bits and pieces like that, this device doesn't have any of the kind of problems that OBS has when you have a lot of action on the screen and problems I had. And for example, here, when we're flying over the city at night, lots of things loading in. My machine is good, it's good enough to play the game like this, but it wasn't good enough to capture at the same time. So having the external recorder is fantastic. Connection-wise with this device, I'm using a StarTech ST122 HD202 splitter, which boasts 4K60 splitting. It's a powered device, and you can either use the wall wart in the box or do what I do, and get some USB to barrel plug connectors and that will feed it 5 volts. I initially had a bit of trouble with the cables either not working completely or having weird green dots appearing on the screen sometimes. I'm currently using a UHD cable that I originally bought for my Blu-ray player but I'm going to get a couple more soon. One of the great features about this device is it has EDID pass-through device ID basically. So with HDMI output 1 plugged into my TV, the computer sees the TV, not the other device, and that's great. So the TV works as it should, and then the second device gets the same signal. It just works perfectly. The Ninja does support HDMI pass-through, uh, but I tried that and the TV didn't like it, unfortunately. I also tried duplicating the display on the graphics card, but it just can't handle it, the card, unfortunately. And upgrading the card to support that would defeat the object. Um, I don't get any screen tearing when it's recording with this splitter, but I did see it when I was trying out the duplicate mode. Now time for a bit of Horizon 4, and somehow when I wanted to show this thing off, I've managed to find the only foggy day I think I've ever seen in Horizon 4, but again it shows off the motion quite well. It does get sunny soon, but we're going to talk about colours. 
I had to change the colour settings on my PC to YUV444 to get the colours to behave properly on this device. You are seeing the footage straight from the device, I haven't done any colour grading at all. This is correct colour as far as I'm concerned. When it was set to RGB it would crush the blacks and it just looked kind of rubbish. I haven't been able to get HDR working as I mentioned earlier. The TV doesn't play well, this Samsung TV doesn't play well with HDR in PC mode. You have to change it to games console mode and then it just looks a bit rubbish unfortunately. I went to play with the train after this. Again, this now shows off the nice colours. Audio capture uh, is a little bit different the way I'm doing it. I'm actually capturing it from 3.5mm line input from the tape recorder out on my amplifier, which is connected to the PC. Now HDMI audio does work, but I don't have analogue output from the TV to then feed into the amplifier. So it, I do have an optical converter, but that's a little bit noisy, so I've just gone with it this way, and it, it sounds fine as far as I'm concerned. Now watch me absolutely stuff up this speedrun. But what it does allow us to do is show the 60 frames a second at quarter speed, and it is genuine 60 frames per second. You can see that there, there's no messing about. Finally, the last few clips in Just Cause 3 and just mention that this footage was all edited in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2020 and I had absolutely no issues editing it whatsoever. This is the raw footage I'm editing as well, no proxies. I know I should set up proxies, but I didn't. And it was great. In fact, it was a joy to edit. It edited better than some of the H.264 or HEVC footage that I was editing yesterday from the GoPro. It was fantastic. And those were a fraction of the size and bit rates. I can't really understand why, but it was great. Um, I'm just messing around here with the, uh, the weapons. Again, I have a, a trainer thing to be able to mess around in single player. But uh, I didn't turn it on, <laughs> so I uh, ran out of ammo on the Fire Leech. Fire Leech is a great weapon. So I just deal a helicopter and uh, just cause some trouble, basically. I hope you enjoyed this, or it was useful in some way. I'm going to put links to all the items down below, but they're not affiliate links because I can't be bothered to go through that. Um, I'm going to sign off because I'm going to get myself killed by another helicopter. So I will see you later. Thanks very much for watching.